Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this somewhat mysterious phenomenon that we actually know very little about, known as the Milky Sea, sometimes also known as the Mareel, a phenomenon that's connected to bioluminescence, a glowing of living organisms, but in this case it's on a scale that's never been seen before, covering hundreds and hundreds of square kilometers, literally turning an entire patch of ocean into this glowing sea, sea on fire which is exactly what Mareel means as well. It means Sea of Fire. And so today we're going to be focusing on this recent paper that was able to finally use satellite data to investigate and to prove that these particular phenomena do exist and even learn some of the details of where they usually happen, how big they get and how often we can expect them every single year. But I guess first let's start right here. If you've traveled to some of the more tropical areas and if you've visited certain regions on the planet, you might have actually seen this, the bioluminescent waves that sometimes also make surfing quite an interesting experience. And we actually know pretty well how this is formed, but this is not exactly the same phenomenon. In this case, the bioluminescence is caused by these very tiny dinoflagellate organisms, organisms that might look something like this under the microscope that tend to produce bioluminescence if they're disturbed by something physical. Like for example, if you were to move through the water or if the waves were to crash onto the beach, this would essentially result in the sudden creation of light in that particular region. But the Milky Sea seems to be an entirely different phenomenon. All of the data collected from satellites over the past few decades does suggest that this actually happens entirely free of any disturbance. The ocean itself or the sea itself starts to kind of glow for many many days and sometimes even weeks. Which of course suggests that even though these phenomena are related, they are entirely different. On top of this, unlike this bioluminescence that's pretty well known and pretty well documented, the Milky Sea phenomenon was actually seen as a potential hoax or potentially just a legend. Or in other words, like many other sea legends, it was believed to be something that someone made up. How can an entire ocean, an entire sea glow in the dark and produce a lot of light? But back in 2005, for the first time ever, the scientists have officially proved this phenomenon through essentially a photographic evidence from a satellite. And so what used to be a legend now became a scientific fact. The next step became figuring this out. How does it work? Who creates this? And what else is happening here that we don't really understand? Well, it's been about 16 years now and we still know very little about this particular phenomenon. In general though, we understand quite a lot about bioluminescence. And here's a fun fact, bioluminescence or glowing in different animals has independently evolved 40 different times. In other words, it seems to be an extremely successful strategy. And it's used for various reasons. It's used for communication, it's used as camouflage, it's used to attract food, it's used to attract mates, it's also used to scare away potential predators, and it's also obviously used for a lot of other reasons such as just attracting your food. But pretty much all of these organisms seem to employ a relatively similar strategy, even though usually it produces different types of light. They seem to use this component or this compound known as luciferin, with the compound itself resembling something like this. Now obviously it differs a little bit from species to species, but generally this compound involves a chemical reaction, usually with oxygen, which essentially excites the molecule and then when it goes back to its ground state, it releases a photon of light. And depending on the compound and the enzyme used, it will produce a slightly different color. But unlike some of the other types of marine bioluminescence, such as the one seen in fish, such as the one seen in jellyfish or dinoflagellates, whatever is produced during the milk sea phenomenon is bright enough to be visible from space, which is of course something that is really difficult to explain right now. It also seems to produce a somewhat steady uniform light that does not actually depend on the disturbance or any other features of the ocean. And whatever is causing it seems to stay this way for a very long time. As a matter of fact, some of the previous mariners compared this to a kind of a glowing snowfield that expands all the way to the horizon, with the light produced being somewhat bluish white in color. So somewhat different from the one we observe in some of the other marine organisms. But interestingly enough, back in 1988, even before the confirmation using satellite data, at least one research vessel accidentally passed through the Milky Sea's phenomenon. And back then the scientists were able to collect some of the samples from the water. You can read more about this from the paper right here. But back then the assumption was that a lot of this bioluminescence is most likely caused by this bacterium present in the water. Bacterium known as the Vibrio harvey. 
But this encounter only happened once, and because of this, nobody could confirm this, and since then nobody really knew what's really happening here. More importantly, it would be extremely difficult to explain why so much of this bacterium seems to accumulate in certain areas of the world. So, one of the major discoveries from this recent study is actually pinpointing the exact locations where we seem to have the most of these milky seas. A lot of them happen in the regions you see right here. Either in the Indian Ocean close to the Arabian Sea, in between islands in Indonesia north of Australia, or in some cases near Sri Lanka with the vast majority happening in the Indian Ocean. And interestingly enough, from all the observations in the last hundred or so years, the scientists established that this happens at least three times a year. But unfortunately, somewhat unpredictably, there doesn't seem to be any seasonal pattern or seasonal correlation. At the same time, all of the recent data from the satellites in the last 12 years or so established that these phenomena seem to be relatively regular. They also seem to cover extremely large areas, up to about 100,000 square kilometers. And as I mentioned before, they also seem to persist for days and sometimes weeks. So hypothetically, it should be possible to maybe reach these locations to study them further. But at the moment, it has not been done just yet. But one of the main reasons why a lot of new data is available now and a lot of new data allows us to prove that this phenomenon actually does exist is because of this NASA mission known as the Suomi National Polar Orbiting Partnership with a satellite that uses VIRS, which stands for Visible Infrared Imaging Radiometry Suite, which allows the satellite to detect extremely minute emissions of light, which allows the satellite to detect a lot of things about our oceans. One of the main missions here is measurements of chlorophyll and the oxygen-producing organisms in our oceans. You can actually access a lot of this data yourself by going to this website here and choosing one of these links to data access. For example, this one here, allows you to go back in time and see what our planet looked like in the last 9 years or so, so all the way back to January of 2012. And here, by going through different periods, you might be able to zoom in and then see what the oceans and the distribution of chlorophyll looked like. But then by choosing the nighttime data here and possibly going through some of the dates in the past, you could hypothetically maybe discover some of the other bioluminescent phenomena that might have been missed by these scientists. Now, personally, I haven't tried this myself because there are a lot of different pictures out there, but in theory, it's definitely possible. And because of this extremely sensitive NASA satellite, the nighttime data from around the planet allowed the scientists to identify at least 12 different instances of this phenomenon in the last 9 years. But what became more clear is that these phenomena seem to be somehow connected to the monsoon season, at least in the Indian Ocean. Which means that in this particular region, it could be connected to the sudden enrichment of water in various nutrients delivered by the monsoons. However, this did not apply to all of the regions. In some of the regions, right now it just looks completely random. Although it could obviously be still connected to the nutrition being brought to the water, with nutrient-rich waters obviously coming from something entirely different. Moreover, it was discovered that the actual glow seems to be extremely steady, no matter the conditions of the ocean, even if there's a storm, or if the water is completely still. And the actual glow seems to be mixed throughout the water, it's not just the surface glow. Suggesting that the organisms responsible for the glow are not just on the surface, but also seem to be slightly deeper in the water as well. And so altogether this paper provides a lot of exciting discoveries, but unfortunately pretty much no answers. We still have no idea what produces this, or more importantly for what reason, and we still have absolutely no idea if this is caused by the bacteria discovered back in 1985, and if so, why so much of this bacteria is present in those regions? So quite a lot of unanswered questions and quite a lot of mystery even now. More importantly though, this study finally allows us to confirm the largest bioluminescence phenomenon on the planet. The phenomenon that happens at least three times a year and seems to be extremely large in size hundreds of thousands of square kilometers covering an area equivalent to a small country. And so hopefully in the next few years, at least some of the scientists will be able to catch this phenomenon firsthand, with this particular area in the North Indian Ocean possibly presenting the best opportunity to finally catch this and to finally analyze the water samples from this region. But I guess until then, or until someone figures out what exactly is happening here, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. As always, all of the papers and relevant links are in the description below, 
And on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.